Hey guys, and believe it or not, it is that time of year again. I'm sat editing the footage from the British Shooting Show 2020, held up at the NEC again. Uh, and it was a really busy year. I mean, maybe not so much for new releases. Last year it was very busy for new releases. But still a couple of decent new products coming out. A lot of the existing lines now to see. A lot more of the Glocks here this year. Obviously last year it had been announced. Whereas now, obviously, a lot of the models are now out and starting to kind of find their way through into shops. I have to say, I felt so sorry for the guns on the Umarek stand this year. They were being poked, prodded, clicked, racked the lot. Um, they are not going to be in good shape at the end of this uh, event. But anyway, we'll crack on, have a look at some of the new releases that have come out. Um, some of the products I think are quite interesting. There's a few things I've left out this year. Obviously, we covered them last year. I don't want to be going over old footage. So anyway, let's crack on with the start of my pick of the BSS-20. So one of the first stops for me, as per usual really, was the Highland Outdoor Stand. Now, the SIG range has always been a very strong performing range and also a very, very good seller. And interestingly, it's not just the standard. Everybody's doing 1911s. They've got a lot of the new releases, the M17s, the little P635, uh, and a lot of the other range as well. So obviously the MPX, the MCX, and as I say, this little 365. Now, how anybody managed to fit a 12 gram CO2 cartridge in a full size dropout mag in a pistol that size is beyond me. Uh, this is definitely one I'm going to have to try and get my hands on, as it just looks like a really fun little replica, um, and it really solidly built. Now also this year as well, they had the Springfield sort of side of things. Now these are replicas I've not really come across before, um, but I have to say, actually really impressed. The build quality on the, the pistol, I think it was the XDM, I think it was, um, was really nice. I mean, it was solid, no creaks, it's locked as it would, open breech, it was everything a collector would really be looking for. And they also had this cool kind of World War II era rifle, and I've heard rumblings of a couple of other interesting releases as well, such as new K898, I'll see the old German Mauser, and a few other bits. And apart from that, they did have the usual line of the optics as well, the SIG optics, and the new BDX system. Now, this is a ballistics data app, essentially, that connected with your scope uh, rangefinder via this app. So you can make adjustments to your reticle, so if you type in it's 200 yards, it will adjust your ret to 200 yards, no holdovers. They say this data is on it and this system is solid, so we'll have to see. Now, the other big talking point this year, obviously, was the Virtus. Now, this was announced last year, a little bit slow getting it out. Um, it had to have a few tweaks to make it a little bit more UK friendly, should we say. Uh, basically the trigger, the trigger was the big sticking point because this rifle unlike some of the other models is sitting at just below full power it cannot be semi-auto so as you'll see you have this extra kind of process that's been put in you have to physically reset the trigger and that's how they're going to uh, be marketing it in the UK very interesting rifle, a lot of buzz and I will try and get my hands on one of these as soon as I can try and find one available only a quick stop to Virac this year. No new product as such other than the new laminate option for the HW110. Black pepper, as you can see, bit of pick rail on the bottom. Really nicely made, but nothing too new, so to speak. Another really strong showing for BSA this year. Obviously, no new products as such. Uh, last year saw the announcement of the new TH and sort of the revisions made on that model. So this year we're just showing a couple of the new stock options. Obviously you just see at the top of the screen they've got this new black pepper laminate which I think looks absolutely stunning. Um, so let's say no new lines, just refinements of existing ones. A gun that I also kind of took my eye really was the Gold Star. Now you just don't really see them around. Um, I don't know if that's because they're not kind of in the top area sort of price wise coming in at over a thousand pounds they are still very cheap for a competition rifle but from using one before it was incredibly capable so i'm going to try and get hold of one of these this year and kind of work out why you don't see many more of them i think really it's people looking to spend even more money and they just overlook it so it'll be an interesting rifle to have a look at next stop for me was the brocock slash day state stand now there was a lot of really nice rifles on display and also some of the ones from like times gone as well which I thought was a really nice feature now i've always had a bit of a niche to get one of these again since selling my old airwolf uh, kind of regretted it ever since but i just can't justify the two thousand pounds in my head at the moment to replace it which is a bit of a shame now unfortunately they didn't have the new one that they've kind of been toying and teasing with um, looks a bit sort of the outline of an impact, shall we say. 
They didn't have it, I believe that's going to be shown at IWA. So we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed and our eyes open uh, to see if that comes out. The new Commander XR, I have to say, was a bit of a surprise. Now, it's not a rifle I'd come across before. Picking it up a lot lighter than I'd expected. Seemed really nicely made. Obviously, pick rail on the top, on the bottom, and a folding stock. So, for a lot of modern pest control and modern shooting, a really capable rifle. Uh, and again, be interested to see how this one sells and how it's received on the forums. A much stronger display from FX this year, thanks to the swap from ASI over to Sportsman's Gun Center. They had everything from the new Impact Compacts, you can see at the top there, through to a lot of the new versions of the Dreamlines. Uh, the one at the top of the screen there was a particular favorite. They have been able to cater for anybody, so whether you want to do close-up pest control or long-range work, you can get a barrel or a spec to suit whatever you want to do. And obviously the yellow jacket uh, crown as well, which people have been finding quite hard to get, however Sportsman have assured us that they're readily available. Now it's been quite nice to see these rifles being pushed. Obviously FX has been one of those brands in the UK that we wanted to get our hands on it, but it's been very difficult. Obviously weights were incredibly long, in some cases guns never turned up. But again, I've been assured by, um, by FX and obviously Sportsman that this will no longer be the case, which is pretty epic. Now one that took my eye, obviously, was this little folding compact at the top. Now, there's a slight different version to this Dreamline versus what will come out. The barrel is going to be about two centimeters longer. Obviously, the folding stock needs to retain a certain overall length to allow it to remain as an air rifle and therefore stay at 12 foot pound rather than six foot pound. Now one thing to note as well is the stock, you get to choose your own stock, the MOE one there isn't included. Obviously AR stocks are everywhere and you're probably going to chop and change anyway. Now going back to the braces stand, we were able to bump into the guys from Save Tactical and Donny himself. Now I've picked up one of his moderators um, because I've just been fighting hard to get one and also had a chance to check out his new impact which was just incredible. Slight impact envy on that one and I think I'm going to have to try and build a similar spec myself. Now, whilst I was over on the Sportsman's stand, I was able to bump into Giles, I'll see from Egg on Gear Show and Egg on 101, and Hunter's Vermin as well, an amazing channel from Northern Ireland. Really good to catch up with those guys, actually meet them uh, and have a chat, and to meet a lot of you as well, which is really, really cool. Okay, so this is... One stand that did have some really interesting stuff was the Range Right stand. Now, Crow is a brand that I see getting asked about quite a lot. Um, personally, I've just not been able to get my hands on one. I will try and make an effort to try and feature these guns on the channel as I appreciate they've got a bit of a following coming up. Uh, and they also have the Crossman SBR, a um, couple of different versions of that. One came with an optic, one didn't. Uh, they both came with a little angled foregrip. Again, really interesting replica gun. Um, and one for sort of the plinkers and the hobbyists out there. So again, I'll see if I can try and uh, get a bit more information and hopefully they will feature shortly on the channel. It was another strong year for Airsoft, I would say, at the show. Maybe lacking in previous ones, but good to see companies like Land Warrior back. A uh, company I've used several times, really, really top guys uh, based up in Scotland. Um, and also just some other really weird replicas that maybe you don't see that often. A lot of areas on this particular stand. And a Hudson H9. Now, I regret not buying this gun. I should have bought it while I was there. Really interesting history of real life. Um, the company went under, so the gun doesn't exist in real life anymore. So the replicas aren't in around, I would say, much longer after that. So, gutted didn't buy that one, hopefully you'll see one coming up. Also, what was really, really cool to see actually was a better display from the practical side. So, obviously we had the Airsoft Surgeon Shield Cup this year. A lot of guys obviously spent a lot of time and effort perfecting this, uh, and it was really, really good to watch. And to see, like, just actually this different side of shooting. I was really, really happy that they brought this into the show this year and actually included it because it shows a, an up and growing side of shooting that I think has kind of been neglected for years gone by by a lot of people. And as you see from this chap here, they were on it. Like, they were really skilled with what they were doing. I don't know if they've kind of downloaded some kind of weird aimbot or what's going on, but they were absolutely on it. Something I've always wanted to try, never really had the knowledge of where to start really or even where to look um, to just sort of take it up but the guys there really willing to answer any questions any comments and really welcoming so to the shooting show thank you for including this this was a side that personally i think been lacking in previous years and hopefully these guys will return in years to come As one of the main sponsors, it was really cool to be able to get hold of Shield Sites and have a look at some of their products. Now, these aren't sites that I've kind of had first-hand experience with before, 
But from what I saw over the weekend, solidly made, really clear red dot, and they come up perfect co-witness. And the minute you bring that gun in front of you, the red dot was there. I have to say, really, really impressed, and I can see why they were so popular um, amongst competitors and also on a couple of the other stands at the show. Definitely a product I want to look more into, maybe to go on top of the pistols, so I can give Practical a bit of a try. Now it always amazes me how popular scopes are at the shooting show. I don't know if it's just because they're a little bit more affordable rather than buying a brand new gun, but stores like the Optics Warehouse store, Hawk that you see on the screens here, were rammed, particularly on Saturday. Um, very, very busy, made it quite difficult to film, but good news for them, bad news for me. There was a lot on show, nothing really that jumped out at me and kind of went by me. Um, the new Frontier I thought did look quite good. It's actually got the throw leaves and things like that built onto it, which I thought was a neat little feature, rather than having to buy additional ones from companies such as Vortex, etc. That was a neat feature. SIG obviously had uh, their range down the Highlands. Some interesting kind of rets on these, um, some a little bit too confusing for me, a bit too much information on the ret. But they did have this really interesting new BDX system. Now this uses an app and adjusts your point of aim accordingly to the data that you've input on your phone. Really neat system, we will be having a look. Night vision, thermal as well, ever popular. The Thomas Jack stand was rammed again on both days, which was good to see. And I also managed to get a hands-on look at the new PARD systems. Now the thermal looked really good, but as of yet, there is no confirmed uh, RRP. So hopefully we'll try and get my hands on one of those because a lot of buzz about those recently for various reasons. Now I'm not going to feature the firearms and the shotguns as heavily as I did last year, mainly because I think we had so many new releases last year that there weren't as many uh, 2020. Now there were a few bits, obviously I'll show these in sort of my little highlight reel here. I mean that new chassis system for the CZ was really good and the mag tube on that Winchester was just insane. But there wasn't anything that really kind of jumped out that I wanted to show again. You know, there was a risk of just showing the same footage from last year. Now the RAF guys, really nice. If you want to trick the RAF reg guys, go and tell them the SLR was better. That was probably one of the funniest conversations I've ever been witness to. But other than that, sort of from a more civilian side of things, there were a lot more of what I would call the practical style rifles. AI played really heavily this year. Um, decent stand again, obviously, with the pra precision of practical lead that they're doing with uh, Tiff Drew. Um, and a couple of new releases as well, which are amazing guns, just way too expensive, out my budget. But let's say, practical shotguns, that kind of thing, it seemed a lot more prevalent than maybe in years gone by, which is nice to see. And I finally, thanks to the guys at Edgar Brothers, managed to get my hands on one of these Schmeiser AR 15s. I've wanted to buy one of these for a while, but I didn't want to do so without actually having a look at one. So being able to get hands on was really good, and I think I've just filled my 223 slot. So that pretty much wraps up my coverage of the shooting show for 2020. So we're just going to do a couple of honorary mentions as we finish things through. Um, and just a couple of products that maybe I didn't look at as much as I wanted to, such as this new Chiapa CO2 revolver. Used this for shells, built like an absolute brick. I really want to try and get my hands on one of these. H&N also as well, got some really good stuff coming from them, um, obviously the slugs this year, very interesting guys, it was a pleasure to talk to them, so thanks for taking the time. Uh, and then yeah, Vortex, it wouldn't be a video without Vortex. These are examples here, when I mentioned the warranty, the review um, of what they will cover, which was insane. Olight as well, they've been a supporter of the channel this year, a couple of things on um, test at the moment, and my partner just picked up a new head torch, it was really good to meet them. Uh, and just see what they were about really. But other than that, some other really interesting products around. There was a lot that I couldn't cover, I just didn't have the time, and a lot that I just didn't want to go over again from last year. So hopefully you've enjoyed my coverage. Um, obviously if there's anything you want to ask, any questions, any comments, feel free to put those in the box below. If you've not checked us out on Facebook or Instagram, pop across and check us out there. And obviously Airgun 101 we're now featuring quite heavily on which is pretty cool. There's going to be loads more coming up from us in recent months. I've got to go away to Cumbria, do some training. I will be back at the end of March and things will be back to normal by then. One final thanks, really, and a big one really, is to Steve from the British Shooting Show for sorting us out with a press pass and uh, just being really lovely on Friday morning. Very well run show again, guys, and I'm really looking forward to next year. Hotel's already booked and my time off work is already booked as well. So until next time guys, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, any questions put them below and we will see you on my next video. Thanks for watching.